Hey, Craig. Hey, Martin. What are you working on? I built a web app and a mobile app that display info about famous artists. It is backed by a simple REST API running on Cloud Run, uh, but my users are reporting that it's sometimes slow. Uh, can you help me speed it up? Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like you might need a caching layer. Let me show you how it's done. Great. All right, Craig, so here is my API. Uh, if I hit the URL here, it takes three seconds to respond. Three seconds? What does your code look like? <laughs> uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, this call here runs a complex database query. It takes several seconds to complete. Ah, I see. So you could try to save recently accessed artists in a cache, and that would make your slow database query run less often. Uh, and it looks like your data structure here is pretty simple, just an ID that points to an object, and that really lends itself to a key value cache. Okay, sounds good. Uh, can you show me how to do it? Absolutely. Click Memory Store in the Cloud Console. Uh, memory Store is built to handle exactly this kind of caching. Okay, uh, I will pick Redis for now, and I'm um, enabling Memory Store in this project. Okay, great. Now click Create Instance and give it an instance uh, name and display name. And then for the rest of the fields, the defaults are fine. So you should be able to click the Create button. Now your Redis server is being initialized. And this server sits in a virtual private cloud, so it's not accessible from the outside internet. That means the next thing we need to do is set up a connector so that your cloud run service can connect to this virtual private cloud. And to do that, first pick VPC network in the navigation sidebar, then click serverless VPC access. Now click create connector, give it the name my VPC connector. Under network, pick default. And under subnet, pick custom IP range. Now in the text box, enter the suggested value of 10.8.0.0, that works great and click the Create button. Now, let's head back over to Memory Store and copy the IP address of the Redis instance that we just created. Now, in your deployment script, add Redis host, Redis port, and VPC connector as environment variables. Uh, OK, uh, now that is done, I will enter the code snippet you sent me. Awesome. That snippet creates a Redis client object so that your other code can use that to access the cache. And then instead of calling get artist from database, we can call a new function, get artist from cache. Now in this new get artist from cache method, the first three lines simply make the Redis client use promises instead of callbacks. And this just makes your code easier to read. Then the code checks to see if the artist with the given ID is in the cache. If it isn't, it calls get artist from database and puts that artist in the cache. Finally, it reads the artist record from the cache and returns it. All right. Uh, OK, I'm deploying the updated code to Cloud Run. Very good. Uh, the code is now deployed. I'm hitting the URL now. Oh, it's still as slow as before, Craig. Yes, of course, because the artist is not yet in the cache on that first request. But if you reload the page, I think it'll be a lot faster. OK, uh, reloading. Whoa, that was a lot faster. Cool. Uh, but what if I need to update that artist record in the database? Well, then you'll need to update it in the cache, too. I sent you some more code for that. Did you get it? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, let's see, entering it now. OK, great. So this method uses the request payload to update both the cache value and any database records. So the cache is never stale. Mm, excellent. Uh, let me redeploy the API. Now back to Postman. Here I have a put request that will add the field movement to Frida Kahlo's artist record. Uh, she belonged to the surrealism movement. Well, that's perfect, because you're going to have a surreally fast API with all this caching. <laughs> Maybe don't quit your day job, Craig. Uh, all right, now to reread that artist's data. Ah, and here it is with a new movement field added. 
And it was very quick, served from the cache. Uh, thanks for helping me speed up my API, Craig. Happy to help. Now, right now, your code is using the read-through and write-through caching strategies, and they work pretty well for most applications. But you might also want to search online for some other caching patterns in case those work better for your app. Now, also remember that your code can never count on this object being in the cache. That's why we still have the database backing it up. When a cache fills up, it can kick out objects at any time. All right. Thank you for that reminder, Craig. And thank you, everyone, for watching. You will find a link to the code and to the memory store documentation in the description below. Please let us know in the comments if you found this episode useful or if you have suggestions for future episodes. Happy caching! Mm -hmm.